Hi guys, welcome to the thermodynamics topic. We're talking about the subtopic living things and entropy. I'd like you to think about where entropy actually comes from in this set of slides. So let's, let's think about where entropy comes from. Well, starting with living things, here are some leaves. Geez, they're pretty ordered, aren't they? Very pretty things with a nice shape and lines through them. Living things grow and organize themselves and the things around them. I mean, you can see the organization here in the leaves and the fact that a tree grows upwards and the roots are very ordered down the bottom. Okay, the roots are a bit tangly, but every plant has a nice vertical structure and within the plant cells there's a lot of order. Certainly it's not like a gas. There's structure there. Whenever you have structure, you have low entropy. You do not have heat. Heat is the lack of structure. Now, when living things die, their bodies are dispersed and entropy increases. Obviously, when you die, you go into the ground and worms eat you and uh, your pieces of matter that used to make you up get dispersed. Or maybe you get cremated. Then you definitely get your entropy goes to hell. So, therefore, living things are constantly working to keep their entropy low. Uh, if they don't work to keep their entropy low, they're dead. And if they're dead, their entropy increases. So living things are constantly working to keep their entropy low. Living things poo and radiate heat to the environment to make sure that they can keep entropy low. So when uh, animals eat food, food is made of nice leaves, hay. These are dead plants. Even though they're dead, they still have some residual low entropy and the animals eat these ordered entities and then produce something which is quite disordered and they do this in order to keep their entropy low. They also radiate heat and in the process of radiating heat they are creating a lot of disorder in the environment. Remember delta H divided by Q is equal to entropy change in anything and in particular if the temperature of the surroundings goes up the entropy of the surroundings goes up and that can help that can help to keep the entropy levels of the animal low so the primary purpose of eating is not to get energy no it isn't it's in fact to keep entropy low uh, the energy of a living thing is roughly constant in fact unless the animals getting fatter and fatter uh, it's putting out, it's converting heat to stored fat and in that case its energy content is increasing. So actually animals try and maintain their energy levels to be constant but they try to keep their entropy low and this idea was proposed by Erwin Schrödinger and he realized that living things are indeed negative entropy machines. They're machines that try to keep themselves in order at the expense of making disorder and randomness and heat in the environment, increasing the entropy of the environment. By the way, I always associate disorder with increasing entropy. That's not always the case, but it often slips out. Uh, so Schrodinger was the guy to propose this in a book called What is Life, where he theoretically predicted the existence and form of DNA before it was discovered. If you don't know, Schrodinger is the, one of the fathers of quantum mechanics. And it's really interesting to see that he actually was very important at the genesis of molecular biology. Physicists were always wondering about where life came from. And so he turned his mind to it in this book. It's a good book, easy to read too. Now, most low energy food sources, low entropy food sources rather, can be traced back to plants. They're at the bottom of the food chain. So let's trace where this low entropy comes from. Plants get their low entropy from the sun, mostly. They take disordered gases, carbon dioxide, and sun and water, and they convert these disordered materials into these beautiful structures. So they're actually getting very ordered energy from the sun. Now, how is that possible? The sun's rays come to the earth uh, in a very ordered way 
They come straight from the sun in very, very straight lines. They hit the earth and these straight lines are of high energy light are converted to low energy heat in the form of infrared radiation. So here we have a picture of the sun, its rays coming straight down to the plants and the plants absorb these uh, red and blue type light frequencies and they emit heat in all sorts of directions. Now, there's a, really a lot of light coming onto the earth and the plants convert it into randomly directed heat. So plants observe, absorb straight rays and poo them out as random heat. They don't use the energy. They don't use the energy. What they use is the ordered arrangement of the light as it comes from the sun. And you know that because plants grow straight up. Trees go straight up. They don't grow in all higgledy-piggledy directions. Uh, generally speaking, they have a structure and they go towards the sun. So that's order. The leaves, of course, spread out a bit and then a little bit disordered. Uh, that's to collect more sun rays. But generally speaking, they're pretty ordered. They're not very random objects. Now, the ordered light is, as I said, radiated randomly from the heat, uh, from in, as heat from all directions in the Earth. Here's a picture of the low entropy right, light coming to the sun, uh, from the sun to the Earth in a very ordered way. Now, why is it that this light comes in an ordered direction? Well, you think it's obvious. Well, I think it is obvious too. The reason it comes in a straight line is because the Earth is a long way from the sun and it goes around the sun. And the reason it goes around the sun is because of gravity. So somehow this arrangement of the Earth and the sun being held together by gravity is the reason why the sun's rays are so ordered and come to the Earth in a particular way. Therefore, the source of the low entropy, that's the low entropy sun rays, used by the plants is gravity. Now, why is it that gravity has all this low entropy associated with it? That's a pretty tricky question. Uh, we've just established that something about gravity has low entropy in it. So the low entropy gravitational energy was actually created at the time of the Big Bang. Uh, there are various theories about how that happens. There's the theory of inflation, uh, which is still not completely accepted by physicists. It states that the universe expanded incredibly rapidly at about 10 to the minus 35 seconds after the Big Bang. It doesn't make sense to me, but the universe expanded and became very large and very flat. And this is a very low entropy situation from a gravitational point of view. Actually, a high entropy situation would be when all the matter in the universe is completely compressed down to a single black hole. That would be the lowest entropy situation. It's absolutely high entropy when all the matter is spread out relatively evenly through the universe as we can see at the moment. So the current situation that we have is an extremely low entropy situation which allows the formations of suns and planets which leads to the formation of ordered light rays which leads to the formation of plants which leads to the formation and maintenance of higher order animals. Now, no one really knows why gravity was so ordered. Most people accept it, but there's still some people that don't. People like Stephen Hawking and Roger Pen Penrose have theories about that. Incidentally, if you've been in the chemistry uh, building, you will see a certain tiling uh, on the floor. This is called a Penrose tiling. Uh, it's an aperiodic tiling. It's very interesting. It's it doesn't completely repeat itself. However, for example, one part of it is not exactly the same as the other, but there are no gaps in it. This tiling is made only from two types of tiles, and it's called a Penrose aperiodic tiling. Here's Roger Penrose of here. Uh, a bit, uh, I don't know if he's older or younger than, I think he's a bit younger than uh, Stephen Hawking. But you can see Penrose's signature on the wall. He was invited here and I was there to see him sign his signature there. You can read more about these ideas in Penrose's book, The Emperor's New Mind, where he proposes these ideas, which are actually just a rehash 
of Schrodinger's original ideas. Hope you enjoyed that. <laughs>